Hello, my name is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to class session 16 of Introduction to Neural Networks. This is the final class session for this course. In this class session, we are going to review the final exam. The final exam was assigned in class session 15. The final exam is a series of questions about this course. We will walk through those questions and I will review my answers for them now. The first question asks when you would use the hyperbolic activation function over the sigmoid activation function. The hyperbolic activation function allows positive and negative numbers, whereas the sigmoid only allows positive numbers. Question number two asks you to describe the structure of the following network types. The Hopfield neural network is a single layer of fully connected recurrent neurons. These neurons connect to all the other neurons, but not to themselves. The self-organizing map has two layers, plus a normalization that occurs just prior to going into the input layer. There's no hidden layer, and of the output neurons, one output neuron wins, and this is the output from the entire neural network. Feed forward has an input layer, an output layer, and one or more hidden layers. The matrices occur between the individual layers. Question 3 deals with the structure of a certain feed-forward neural network type. This feed-forward neural network has an input layer, an output layer, and two hidden layers. The input to the first hidden layer would be a 3 by 15 matrix. The hidden layer 1 to hidden layer 2 would be a 16 by 15 matrix. And the hidden, second hidden layer to the output would be a 16 by 2 matrix. This is taking into account both the thresholds that are embedded into the matrix and the actual weight matrix values themselves. Question 4 deals with how you would structure a certain temporal neural network or a predictive neural network. You would have 10 input neurons which would be given the data corresponding to the 10 temperatures preceding the data to be predicted, one output neuron which would be the day to be predicted, and then the actual data presented to the neural network would likely be a percent as to what percent of the maximum temperature that day's temperature is. There's several ways you could construct the input data, but I would probably use a percent. Question 5 deals with simulated annealing. Simulated annealing simulates the actual metallurgical process of annealing where something goes from a high temperature to a low temperature slowly to give it a good solid crystal structure. Simulated annealing for a neural network takes the weight matrix, excites it according to a certain virtual temperature, and slowly decreases this and causes the neurons to achieve weights between them that is adaptable to a good solution for the problem. Question 6 deals with the learning rate and backpropagation. If the learning rate is too high, the neural network will become unstable and not learn anything. If it's too low, learning will take a very long time. Question 7 deals with the difference between incremental and selective pruning. Incremental pruning starts with an untrained neural network and we try out different neural network architectures which is, a, which is differences in the number of hidden layers and hidden neurons. We increase the amount of hidden neurons until we reach a neural network that can be trained acceptably. Selective pruning works in reverse of that. Selective pruning takes a already trained neural network and analyzes the neurons and removes neurons that are not going to affect the overall output of the neural network, at least not by too much. So these unneeded neurons are removed and then the neural network is reevaluated to make sure that removing those neurons really did not have any material impact on the error for the neural network. Question 8 deals with choosing the correct neural network type for a specific application. For this application, you are writing an insurance application that will want to evaluate life insurance policies and break them into good, medium, and low risk categories. This network would be trained for um, policies that the insurance company has already processed. What type of neural network would you use for this? I would use a self-organizing map because you could pass in a large collection of policies to the neural network and provide it with three output neurons that correspond to these three groups that you want to classify them into. 
Then you see how the neural network breaks these up. You would then evaluate the policies in each of the groups from past experience and see if it's, see what type of risk category they actually are. Then you evaluate how accurately it broke them up into the categories you expected. If it did not break them up into good categories, then you need to evaluate what input you're passing into the neural network. If it is passing, breaking them into the categories you'd like, you're done. Question 9 deals with the validity of a certain pruning operation. Question 9 specifically asks, are you allowed to prune from the input or output neuron layers? The answer is no, you should never prune from the input or output layer neurons. The input and output uh, layer neurons define the very nature of the problem and what you're trying to solve. Pruning is an optimization technique that attempts to find an optimal number of hidden neurons and hidden layers. Because of this, you focus pruning exclusively to the hidden layers, and you treat it just as an optimization process and you figure out how many hidden neurons and how many hidden neuron layers you want. When you're defining the problem and figuring out the neural network architecture, that is the time to be removing neurons or adding neurons to the input and output layers. But pruning is reserved exclusively for the hidden layers. Question 10 deals with momentum and backpropagation training. Recall that with backpropagation training, there were two parameters that we would pass in. We would pass in a learning rate and the momentum. The learning rate determines how fast the neural network is going to learn, and there's certain issues that we already covered with setting either too high or too low of a learning rate. Momentum is a attempt to circumvent the effect of local minima. Local minima can have a bad effect on backpropagation training because a local minima is a local area on the map where, on the uh, training process, where the error rate reaches a minimum, but it's not a true global minimum. So we want to get past the local minimum that backpropagation has a tendency to get stuck into. The way to do this is to use momentum. Momentum keeps the last deltas that were created, the deltas to the weight matrix, and applies them to a certain percent to the current layer. So you're applying learning from the previous iteration to the current iteration. Momentum is expressed as a percent, so it is to what percent of the training deltas for the previous training iteration you're going to actually apply. So you would use a value between 0 and 1 for momentum. You could even go higher than 1, then the training it wouldn't make a tremendous amount of sense, but the training deltas from the previous iteration, if it was higher than one, would actually have more effect on the current iteration than they had had on previous iterations. This is how you use momentum with backpropagation to negate the effects of local minima on the backpropagation training algorithm. This concludes the course, Introduction to Neural Networks. We hope you will keep track of the Heat and Research website and look for future courses that we will be offering in these areas. We also hope that you will take a look at the NCOG artificial intelligence framework that we also produce that will allow you to program more complex neural networks than were introduced in this class. You can also apply the class fundamentals to the open source NCOG neural network framework and create any of the architectures that we created in this class session. You'll find the APIs to be somewhat similar between the neural networks that were introduced in the book and NCOG, though there are some changes necessary for the advanced features that NCOG implements. We hope you enjoyed this course session and we'll look forward to classes with you again in the future. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.